In this video, I'll be attempting to refine the process of microwave centering for aluminum so that others could use the same hardware as I do and achieve success. In my prior video, I benchmarked two new heating elements and graphed the results, so if you're interested, I'd recommend taking a look at that video, which I'll link at the end. These earlier results followed a debind and center cycle that I came up with using the benchmarking to determine fire and sustain, or hold times. As you've probably already noticed from some of these parts, they're still incredibly brittle. Unlike my first successful piece, which was quite strong and polished easily with a rotary tool. So I ended up tweaking the center schedule to use longer sustain times. The idea being that this should increase part density. Also, one thing I've continued to look for after a center cycle is complete is a hard shell that forms around the part. This was present during my first success and has gradually happened less and less. As I burn through my stack of testing parts, it seems clearer to me that adjusting timing alone is not all it takes for a dense aluminum part. My hunch is that zinc was the other key element on my first center. But before I go down that rabbit hole, I also attempted an ammonia-soaked paper towel during the center stage. This was an alternative idea to using commercial flux. Ammonia decomposes at around the temperature aluminum centers, which is convenient and it off-gasses hydrogen, which produces a favorable, reducing environment. I think I'll need to investigate a bit more into this, but for now I just wanted to mention it, since the parts produced didn't end up any better or worse than with just flux alone. Shown here, the parts still hold their shape when removed from the crucible, but are brittle when smacked. I will note though that all these parts have been debound in the microwave alone, and I feel this is quite controllable now. Also, to increase my testing rate and reduce random variables I introduced into these tests, I've been centering two parts at a time, and when I see need for adjustment, I don't have to do another debond. It was about this point where, if this center didn't quite work, I figured I'd need to revisit the alloying effect of zinc with aluminum. With the newer elements being larger, I bent some metal in the shape of a hook, which helps a lot to get the top element out. Things were looking promising with the coloration of the ballast, and when probing with the excavating spade, I could hear what appeared to be metallic sounds. But, just like before, we still didn't quite get there with density. So, what I'm doing here is introducing my zinc putty before I do the debind step. I make sure to sprinkle a layer below and above the part, and then I'll layer a small amount of ballast on top. I've demonstrated this putty in prior videos, primarily though for infiltration of copper prints to increase strength and reduce porosity. Over time, this produced a yellowish hue to my ballast after a while, and ever since centering aluminum, my ballast has almost been purified to an all-white color. Given these are the last two pieces I have for this video, I'm hoping to see either a stronger end result or no difference from the prior flux only centers in order to rule out zinc as a benefactor to success. Initial ballast clumping is a good sign. This first piece is a noticeably different color than the prior flux only impellers, and at first inspection appears to be stronger. But I wouldn't call it functional quite yet. I also followed up with a second center of the other piece, and the results were better, but still brittle. So I think what this means is that I need to do a little bit more research. Cheers.